take a seat. Uh, first item on the agenda is the minutes from the previous meeting. Any additions or motion to motion to adopt? Second. Motion by Paul Ryder, second by Jack Baker. Oh, uh, uh, go ahead. Is there any discussion on the adoption of the minutes? All right. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Vote, same sign. So the next thing, uh, we need to appoint a uh, treasurer for the day since Jay isn't here. So uh, uh, it shouldn't be Michelle. She's the secretary. Oh. So you need to be. I can do it. You want to move uh, uh, move it. Paul moves to appoint Jack. Is there a second? Second. Got a second by Michelle. So time. <laughs> there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, <coughs> same sign. All right, so Jack, you are officially treasurer for the day. copy of our weekly progress report. Our inspector is on site. Uh, uh, is on the job site. So uh, milestone mobilized uh, last week. This is just a, a general report. We, he'll send this out every week. If you want a copy of it, email to you. Let me know. Send me your email address and make sure you get it. I've been sent, sent to Josh and Barry. Um, basically, uh, they mobilized and started work. And as you know, EMB paving, which is doing the in-dot project, the resurfacing project, is basically up against us at, at 100. So um, we had a few issues Monday morning uh, with maintenance of traffic on the two different mazes of traffic meeting up. And there was, there was some confusing confusion. There was some rain. So some of the temporary pavement markings got moved. And 
uh, Packers called me and we took care of it first thing in the morning. So I think that's that's resolved. Um, a few items to note: they did they did hit a uh, line. Um, I think it's it was a cable line from Frontier um, that knocked out some of the cable to the people on the opposite side of the road. Um, that's supposed to be fixed tomorrow, or at least Frontier is finally coming back out to the job site tomorrow. Um, other than that, they're they're continuing to work and moving, uh, coordinating still with NIPSCO. NIPSCO did the re relocation, but there's uh, some issues, maybe some issues with that, but we're, we're dealing with them. Um, we started to, uh, to widen, widen the road and, and move forward. Um, they, NDOT has asked um, for a sign to be put on uh, County Road uh, 100 going to the west, basically a dead end sign that wasn't there, which would be about $500 to added to the contract. But you want to share it the north or 100 south? Uh, it's 100 uh, in front of the industrial park going, going to the west. Uh, the sheriff, sheriff requested a dead end sign. Other than that, I think that's about it. If there's any questions? When's it supposed to be done? Uh, oh, sorry. Winter? 45 days. 45 days. So is everything working out as you originally anticipated as far as shop coming forward, or is it just maybe they're moving faster than I thought they were? Um, maybe. Yeah. Um, it'll, it'll work out. <laughs> we, we were a little slow, they were a little fast. We were slow because of the yesterday. Then Milestone, and Milestone was busy. I mean, you know, Milestone had a window that they could have got in there, and then they got in there. So yeah. We've been trying to coordinate as much as we can with the contractors and with NDOT to make it all work. I'm sure that uh, the patron. It's been surprising. We haven't heard a lot of complaints, yeah. um, but we've been, they've been, our guys have been trying to communicate with them. Now, if you've heard, if you've heard something else, then let me know. But didn't they call eight one one? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing they did. I did. Was it placed differently? Or? It was not marked, and Frontier never marked it. And we sent them a utility relocation plan to begin with, and so they weren't in the limits. They, they actually hit, hit two of them, um, but I don't think the other one was active. So they may have thought this other one wasn't active, but yeah, it was. Thank you much. Is part of it? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Brad. I uh, wanted to talk uh, this afternoon through uh, shell building and uh, what we've kind of done in the meantime leading up to the discussion today, uh, which hopefully today is merely just a discussion on plan, proof, and path forward. So uh, just to kind of give some context, about eight months ago, seven or eight months ago, the Economic Development Corporation, our board, kind of convened in, on the idea of the, what the next phase of the industrial park looks like, and how do we validate the leads we're getting? How do we maximize our opportunity for jobs, job commitments in the industrial park? Um, because we've now been to eight years of, uh, of land and hundreds of leads, um, some really close, um, some we just can't even touch. And uh, the idea of getting our, our park in a position by doing a spec building uh, came kind of came forward. Uh, we had reached out. We started. We formed a committee within the organization. Uh, Jack was part of that discussion, I believe, for shell building, and um, 
the uh, the idea was really rallied around um, what would it look like, what would the needs be, and how do we meet the current demand for uh, economic development. And so we are now to the point to um, we think we have a good structure for a partnership, and wanted to discuss with the Redevelopment Commission on what that could look like uh, moving forward, both financially and physically on the building itself, but also what the financial commitments are. So I wanted to bring that before the body to, to discuss, um, have an open dialogue, uh, troubleshoot, brainstorm. There's nothing poured in stone here. The idea is to really collaborate on what an ideal perspective would be for the industrial park. Uh, our board agrees uh, on consensus that a shale building is something we should do um, and that we should advocate for if we're going to close a deal in the industrial park uh, in, in a shorter time frame. So. I'll, I'll open it up to questions or, or maybe thoughts of the shell building uh, needs. What was the financial situation with that again? Like, uh, were we responsible for interest only or something? Else? Yeah, so we looked at a couple models uh, and, and, and want to talk about how the RDC financing the project is an ideal scenario or um, not keeping it within the local units of government or the EDC to finance the shell building. So I think what we would propose is that we, that the RDC look at a structure that um, allows the EDC to, to formulate the, the deal structure and then it be financially backed by the Redevelopment Commission. And then any proceeds from the sale of the shell building, and this is just conceptual at this point, would, would revert back to pay to pay down any debt if there was any for the uh, from the redevelopment commission. So yes, I, the goal would be that um, we wouldn't work through an interest-bearing uh, loan through the developer that the RDC would finance could finance the deal. And how much was the deal roughly? Um, I think we're and I'll give ballpark numbers: four to five million dollars for. Uh, we're probably looking at a hundred dollars a square foot um, for this for the show. And we have Dan Zerner with Garmong here. Uh, if any questions need to be shot or I say misspoke, uh, Dan has been uh, a great partner, obviously. Garmong has built built a building that's currently in the park um, and uh, has a great deal of success in, de in delivering a product that can land projects and their track record kind of speaks for, the, for itself. So that's, that's it right now. It would be that uh, the RDC would be okay with us moving forward with structuring a deal that would allow us to enter the agreement, the EDC, uh, with the developer and the construction side, and then the finance piece would be supported as long as the numbers were good uh, from the redevelopment commission. So. so you're saying RDC would finance the building, the board of five million, and, uh, and if things went south, like when the economy went bad, how, how would that how would that affect uh, our lives? Yeah, I, I I think there would always be a note that needed to be repaid upon the sale of the building, and that would always be obligated back from our organization to the redevelopment commission once the building is sold. So the market variables do change that that payback time frame, but the goal would be that it's an investment made up front uh, to to net jobs and capital investment, and then the, the actual building itself. Being The goal would be that market variables just are going to change the timeline, could change the timeline if the market changes. Um, but even even with market changes, building inventory is it, it doesn't ebb and flow like the market. So there is zero, nearly zero current. Uh, I guess there is very limited amount of current available building structures for for projects. And so even if the market changes, that demand is, it will slow, will more slowly diminish as the market shifts, if that makes sense. So uh, interest rates haven't really changed that demand at all. So so was it on the table for a while that, that Garmon would, would uh, finance the building and we would just pay the interest? Was that also a... Yeah, and Jack was part of that discussion, I believe. Just just initially, that was the, the uh, that was the initial thought. And that's how it's traditionally structured, per se. Um, but there is a 
there is a tremendous cost savings for the county if this investment's made, if it's done within the Redevelopment Commission's coffers and not not leveraged through the developer. So why, why is that? We why you get money. much cheaper money. Yeah, okay. So yeah, borrowing is cheaper, development fees, there's a lot of that are, the, the fat is trimmed off of it, I'd say, um, for, for this particular deal, if we were to finance it within the local unit of government or the commission as, as it parts to the, uh, the developer themselves. So, so current interest rates for Gar Garmon may be like what, 6 percent versus we get it from three. May I address? Yeah. Can I help you out? Yes, sir. Yes. These are great questions. I just can't resist not giving you good answers. Dick's doing a really good job. So I'm Dan Bernard with Garmon. Appreciate the chance to be here and help me with talk to the county about this now. I think our first presentation in the county about this was in 2008. So that was when the park was first built. So we've all worked on this a lot. Uh, currently, and I will tell you that we've built about 17 acres for counties. White County is the closest one we have. White County had three people fighting away that building at one time. Uh, one of which became Egg Life bought it, which is a good in gross acres farms. And at the same time, we, another suitor was a company called Food and Supply that uh, liked the park so much that they came and built 150,000 square foot right next to it for the king because of the show. And what I'd like to remind everybody about a show building is just a giant building. So if you think about it for a minute, uh, right now across Indiana, situated on the west side of Indiana, right up against Illinois Line 74. It's in a park that made BX gas. So when you talk about food production, even though there's nothing wrong with it today, that stigma kind of sticks with it. Uh, there's virtually no labor force available. Uh, but they sat on that park for a long time, I've 8,000 acres available. And I will say that we've had eight or nine prospects look at that building and it will sell. One of the things that will help it sell now is that building's about half of what it costs to build today. Lady we've seen in three, in three years. So it's, it's, that building will still sell. It's not an issue. The longest we've ever had sell, I said, that question came up, uh, was five years. That was in Muncie. That was a 200,000 square foot building, uh, large building. But at the same time, what happened is you had uh, the locomotive company come in and you had so much expansion that they got down to where their labor force was so short that they just didn't find enough people to fill 200,000 square foot. So, so there are other factors, and keep in mind at that particular time, the school corporation went bankrupt and all state had to take it over. There are a lot of factors that went into that side of the sale building, but we did sell that shell building. And we did sell that to a company that came in and did a total agri farm inside that building. And now it's employing 80 or 90 people, and it's been a very successful project. But it did sit a lot. Did so, you own that one? Yes. Okay. So normally, normally in the model that you originally asked about, uh, Garmon has been willing to do so where the first year the cost of capital is 2% above Wall Street Japan. And then after that it drops to 1% uh, uh, over Wall Street Prime. So the interest rate is significantly more than what you can borrow for. We also have a 5% developer fee, which in this case amounts about $340,000 that would come off of that if we just build for you straight off the cuff. Uh, because you're taking some of our risk out. Where I do think we're the most helped is, is I've traveled all over the world representing countries from Turkey to Germany to, to Switzerland, to Japan, China, a shell building product. Uh, we do think we have the marketing expertise. And what our agreement is with PDC is if you uh, end up going forward selecting us, we will produce all the marketing literature for this and do it right up front before the construction ever starts so we can be marketing this with IEC and others to get to market built with the hope that, and we have had this happen, the hope that it gets sold for a different time. That's the hope. I will give Mr. Clue the credit, whether he wants it or not. He came to me and he said, we like the idea, we would like to use Garmon, but he said, the county can do this so much cheaper if we finance it ourselves. So the idea is we do away with the developer fee, we do away with the extra fees, it would be just a straight markup product, but then that markup we provide turnkey delivery, which includes the architecture, delivery, everything about it, and we provide the uh, marketing support for the Joshua D. Self building. Uh, so that's, that's 
that's the way it's currently proceeding with all federal chance requests. So we don't care either way. We'll do with you as a partner whatever you want, but but if you can borrow the money three percent, given the market I think is out there, I do think it's good deal. Yeah. And And the other thing, the way it's proposed, so you know, is this way, is it okay if I just say how it's proposed? Yeah. 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 So the, the deal is proposed is so that you have really good numbers to work with. There will be an upfront fee not to exceed, that's the number one issue, the words I want to be sure you hear, not to exceed $50,000 authorization for us to engage civil engineering and architecture. We'll probably use a firm called uh, U.S. Architects because they've done eight or ten of these buildings with us and we won't have to go back and have a whole new expensive design start. We'll save money on design. We'll use HWC. They've partnered with us and they know the park. And one of the great things we do is so much of your civil work's already been done. Everything really out there is park developed. So the civil expense developed shouldn't be a lot of money. We're looking at a parcel that has fairly significant elevation drop on one end to the south. That's the less put our docks in without doing a lot of civil work. So we're trying to do everything we can to save money. And the idea is, in that 50,000, we'll be able to come back and give the, the uh, client, which would be the EDC, we'll be able to give them scope, schedule, budget, and a guaranteed maximum price. That guaranteed maximum price will probably include a 5% contingency. Whatever that contingency doesn't get used doesn't belong to Garmon that comes back to the EDC. We've had Bruce Donaldson from Barnes and Thornburg there is a statute that allows the RDC to enter into a deck, uh, direct agreement with the neighborhood corporation. The neighborhood corporation is defined as a not for profit local corporation. The idea is if you would enter into a direct agreement with the operation of EDC, a fund project, that we would enter into a contract with EDC as our client to deliver. Uh, the proposal is that once the building gets sold, the RDC gets that money back to become whole or do another project. The EDC would not be coming up really though with any money that is proposed. The scenario that Josh and, and Jacob proposed to me is that we would be Does EDC have money to, to, to do that? If, or? No, no, we don't have any capital assets. Okay. We have uh, the park as leverage. I mean, could be a potential leverage asset, but no capital. Correct. So does that answer your question adequately? You know, the, the big thing is is the risk. I mean, you know, the, you know, gas is high, wages, everything's going up. So let, let me perceive that. I've been doing these projects since 2004. And you always have the risk of not hitting yourself. And the one thing that has helped out that I don't see changing, we started doing these, build, these projects at $37 a square foot. Today it's a what happens is, even if that building sits two or three years, eventually it becomes so market desirable um, that that takes over. And I don't, everybody says, well, will construction prices come down? I am now the uh, most senior person at Drama. I don't know what's good or bad. I'm the oldest person at Drama. I'm 66 years old. But in my 20 some year career at Drama, I've never, ever seen the price come down. I've seen it stabilize. So if you look at the 2008 recession, it sat still for about five years. But once people get used to paying $130 a yard for concrete, which is what it is today, you might remember concrete is $18, $19 a yard. That's the old one, right? But once people get used to paying $130 a yard, concrete supply doesn't drop. No. It just stays there. So the hedge for you is that the asset is here. The other thing I will tell you right now is it's, the supply chain is so screwed up that if we, if we go to build this building, <coughs> you're probably not going to have a significant cash outlay for at least eight or nine months. Because we right now are 12 months out on precast concrete. We ordered it today. We're 11 months out on structural steel. But what, makes, but what makes these buildings su in such demand is a company that has a contract can't wait two years to have their building built. And that will help you in the they're willing to come out a lot yet if you've got a building available that nobody else has. They're willing to change that dynamic. The other thing it does for you, here's the big thing it does for you. I started down, I'm sorry, I kind of got sidetracked. I mentioned about 500,000 acres of industrial property, plus again, RV shelter. 
IDC won't bring a client in hand very often to Delphi to look at your custom parts. One bean field looks exactly like it. Right. But if you've got the shell building, in White County, we had 11 trips inside of two years for IDC actually being the clients to see the building. So that's, and, and again, uh, one client decided he liked the park so much he was built next door. He wouldn't have done that without a shell. How long did it take to sell the White County building? It was sold before that. Just, just for a little frame of reference, I mean, it costs us about $66,000 per million dollars we borrow, and that would be dependent on how much cash we put out and how much we finance for a deal. But, um, so just say we hit three, right? It'd be like $180,000, but um, given that it's a TIF, TIF district, that new tax revenue that they generate is going to, I mean, The ROI on it is very high for the industry. So the payment is $330,000 a year. Well, it well, depends on how much you borrow. So if I mean, well, I mean, I would assume we would borrow off by a million, but uh, I mean, we could theoretically. So would, would we? I mean, we've got money sitting. I mean, we have $5 million of cash sitting here. Right. So, so, I mean, I don't think that we would probably finance 100%. We could. I mean, it's, it, we, that's an exercise in Michelle's between. This analysis, but I mean, that's, that's the. What would you think normally you'd do is borrow half of it, like two and a half million? Uh, just a rough guess here, Michelle. My personal opinion is that, um, and Josh and I talked about this a little bit, I think this project's a great idea. I want to see all the numbers. Um, I think that we need to know exactly what all of our commitments are to all of our pots so that we can determine how much money we want to borrow on this as opposed to where our other cash is going. You can't just use up all your cash. And or even 50% of your cash if you don't know what your other projects are coming. Right. So we right. think we need to take some numbers down so we know where we're at. One of the other things I would like to interject, if I may, don't get too far ahead yet. The, the really important thing is, and I know this sounds self-serving, but is to enter into the deal structure to the point where Josh can issue a $50,000 commitment for design. Because once we get to that design and bring it back to you, we will know exactly what the project's going to cost and what the commitment is. But you'll also have done everything you need to go ahead and market the project. And even if you kill the project after 50000 he has a model and a diagram and a schematic and a picture of the building that he can go ahead and show somebody if they show up and say they want to build it. But that's, you said Josh, I want to make sure. I'm oh, sorry, sorry David. So this, okay, come in. Yeah, so that would allow us on the EDC side to have a, a pre-engineered product because even having maps and schematics and pre-engineering timeline done to lay for a prospect when they walk in the door is light years ahead of just green field or, or, or having dirt ready to go. So I think there is a competitive advantage there. Um, that's a good point because we're, we're getting all of our engineering done for 50000 on a $5 million project. Now let me qu clarify that. We're getting schematic engineering okay. done to the point we can provide a coherent compaction process. There will still be construction document engineering to come behind that. I will tell you in that 50,000 garment will probably have 100, 125,000 of old money in it. But, but we need $50,000 to secure enough work to come back to you so Michelle can say, this is exactly what it's going to cost us and how can we deal with these numbers. Yeah. And without that, I can't give you a, a firm commitment of whether we're talking 4 million, 6 million, 5 and a half million. But once we have those numbers, we'll know exactly where they are. And the second phase is for me, for me to present that in the first phase and then you and the EDC decide if you want to move forward or not, and how you want to move forward. That's the way I see this coming. But so, 50,000 square foot buildings? I'm thinking you want somewhere between 50 and 60. I don't think you want less than 50 because the economies of scale, your design costs and your document costs and everything else is about the same for 30 as 50. And 50 is the common demand right now. So, I mean, over the last year and eight months that I've been with the EDC, over 75% of the leads that I've seen in my mailbox that were active working projects ask for a building. So of course we still fire on them because we have a great industrial park, but I mean they they're they're we're, we're last on the list or we're short, you know, we're not getting shortlisted because of the lack of structure. So I mean it's not it hasn't changed. Plymouth is a really good example. Plymouth had a group called the Plymouth Industrial Development Corporation pit code at 16 years ago went out and built a park. And up to five years ago, nothing had happened in that park. And they actually built it in a swamp. But we went up and took that first project. Since 
done one with another developer, a second project that I understand they just sold, but we put that project in there, and within a year they had that project sold and were allowed to move the park forward. Without the shell building, it's really hard to get these projects started. And what would have been doing that in the park? Yeah, and, that, and that's, yeah, I mean, we, we are where we are, uh, and, and I'm hoping that since I've been with the EDC, we've done a, I think, a fairly thorough job of evaluating why and why not and who and where are we going. And this has just been something that I know was discussed when the park was first built as, as an add-on or as kind of the first steps. Now I have to have the proposals in 2008, it's 37 dollars $8 square foot, I think. Uh, just so you have it in your mind, we're proposing a prefab structure, which is very much like the uh, care white building is yeah. right now. What, why is the precast the way it goes versus <coughs> beams and steel? Uh, the primary reason is, uh, so I build buildings to sell, I don't build them to be cheap. Uh, and the difference is, if you're, uh, most of your prospects are gonna come from Asia or Germany. So if you're in Germany right now, they did away with their last land bill in 2006. So no land bill, everything is 100% recycled or it's incinerated for fuel. You might say, well, what's that have to do with precast building? That everything there, the energy efficiency level is so much more than what we have here. They have to have third story windows. We paint the infrastructure white on the inside, so during the day, if you walk in there with the third story windows, you don't even have to turn the lights on. That, that makes those people say, wow. The other thing is, if you go to Germany and you look at a building, they're way overbuilt. They have a pile aster about this big hall on every 50 feet, running a concrete beam that's for the roof that's the way it is in their industrial parts. If you come over here in the middle of tornado out in wind country, and you walk that German guy in a three engineering steel building, he's thinking, man, this thing ain't gonna sit here. So about half of what we do is lined out to be from a marketing standpoint, clean, bright. The other thing on our project is totally different than most of our competitors. We'll put all the parking lot in, all the landscaping in, all the striping in, all the sidewalks in, so when you bring a prospect in there in December, and you tell him that he can be in that building in 90 days, he believes it. Where a lot of people just go cheap like they did in Rushville a few years, uh, not Rushville, uh, Recorded. Uh, for, well, over the side of the state. Anyway, they built a building over there uh, that they didn't put the road in, they didn't put anything to it, just sitting out in the middle of the cornfield. And it doesn't look like a finished product, right? But it's not. So people don't bite on that as quick. No. So they, they have to believe our commitment is that if, if you come with this building, everything will be in it but the floor and the final power and the final distribution. If those things can all be done without any permitting, out of zoning, out of anything else, and be ready to go in 90 days. Where they'd be setting equipment in 90 days. Yeah. And that's what they want to see. Dan, is the sweetener supply? Yes, it, it, October 5th, Sweetener Supply is in the park at uh, White County, 150,000 square feet. Now that 150,000 square feet building though will represent what we would build for unit 50 in a small scale. It's 30 foot, two foot clear height, industrial building. 30 foot tall. 32. Oh. Yeah, there, there, that is another rate limiting step too, is, is there is there are buildings in empty space um, but they got 12, 18, 15 foot clears, and these companies need need 30 plus. 24 is pushing it with, with what Carol White is right now. Yeah. Anything else I can answer for? Well, I know you've said it, but how, how many squares do you talk this about this being? How many squares? Between 50 and 60. 50 or 60. Yeah, I, I haven't done the analysis. We have to put it on the law. Uh, money may come into that, but I'm, I'm recommending 50,000. And that'll be based upon data too, uh, Mr. Brown, just based upon the leads we're getting and the number. So if we if we feel 60, 65, and I've got enough data that says these leads are on the higher end, then I think that's part of the discussion. So but a lot of come back to what you all feel comfortable finding. Most prospects you say was coming from Germany or where? Germany or Asia. Mm -hmm. A lot of Chinese, Japanese uh, companies. China not so much after the last couple of years, but uh, German, Germany and, and Japan are the two number one, and actually UK. 
Is there any chance the hog plant would want to expand over there if we built that building you're talking about? Yeah, I think it gives more viability. I don't. I would say the upside isn't as great as maybe you would think it would be. Okay. Um, for sure. And, and I, part of that, in my mind, uh, turns out to be: Do you want the rest of the park you know, and the use that goes in there? Is it going to influence other people from investing in the park? So I, I think, in my mind, what you're hoping this building does is bring some diversity to your employment base with some type of automotive manufacturing or some other food grade manufacturing. The corn products from the project was a really great project. I was involved in that. He was too, back years ago. We got close to getting that done. Um, but I think something like that would be a really good asset. Did you have to do it? No. Well, I, and I, there's <coughs> no in California? As far as I know. I would say that, uh, so in recent life, and why this is a talking point now for economic development folks for us in Delphi is, Two billion, one point seven billion dollars Skywater announcement in West Lafayette, uh, two billion dollar Samsung announcement in Kokomo, two billion dollar Lily uh, in Lebanon, which is thirty five minutes south of here. Uh, the the net, the vast network of upstream supply chain that is coming to those OEMs, those are those original manufacturers are going to be enormous, um, and it'll be a diversification to to Dan's point that I think our park can be set up for. Uh, to hit. So there is really no shelf buildings in this region uh, to accommodate the upstream and downstream of, of those projects in specifics. There are some discussions out right now that you would be ahead of. For example, Jasper County is starting to talk about perhaps building a building in the next few years. Um, so White County will probably build another one in their park, but they're probably at least a year and a half years out. Uh, so those are the kind of things that, that are going on right now that you would be ahead of. Did White County borrow money or did they finance it themselves? Well, White County, I, I'm in a very unique position. I've been White County's consultant since 2011 for the development of the park. And because of the wind energy money and the landfill money, there was $22 million in my account to use as a consultant of the bill. And White County took a really unique approach to that. Rather than paying Garmong, and rather than just taking it out of the coffers, they said the chance to have really strong public understanding the purpose of this, they went to local banks and said, we've got good news and bad news. The good news is we're going to put, at that time, it's three and a half million dollars in your bank account. The bad news is you're going to turn around and loan it back to us at a half percent. And at that time, interest rates were down about the past year. And they said, the reason we want to do that is we want the public perception of the banks behind this project. Um, and that worked out really slick. And that's how they did it. But they had all the money they needed. So, so if, we, if we saw another OA type of thing hit, do you, you still think there's enough momentum with all these other things that are happening that, that I don't know about you, that it, it doesn't? Yeah, I mean, I, I get, up, get up every morning and this is what I do, right? So putting a shell building in the park only inherently increases the target, right, for our organization to land a project. Um, but I think um, after being here almost a year and a half, two years, this is the right product. This is, regardless of the market, I don't think it's going to, it's going to pull, or it's, it's going to, it's going to ebb and flow, but uh, site development is really the cutting edge of that, right? So once there's enough product in the market, then everything kind of slows down. So um, I think that given the announcements that have happened around us on that massive scale that we were, I mean, we're not going to land billion dollar projects, that's not what the park is intended to do, but it is intended to support them. So now is the time. Um, so I, may, to to, I may make one more comment about that. The economy right now, even with all the things that are going on on the national level that most of us would agree with in some cases, they have fuel inflation to the extent that it's still on fire. And the projects have gotten so huge. Brownsburg, we have a project right now, it's 400,000 square feet. Um, the projects are huge. They're 150, 200, 250, 400, 500,000 square feet. And the focus for companies has come off of 50,000 square feet. And yet there are hundreds of companies that want to locate. And oddly enough, in our experience, a lot of these buildings are companies that are going locally. 
that are in a pole barn right now or they're in a Quonset hut that, that want to expand but they don't know how to and then the local building comes up like this and they drive by and nothing they say, well, maybe that could be us. And, and I can give you three or four examples in our show building history where it's actually been a local company end up taking us to grow. So I don't think your, I think your recession concerns are valid, but I think there's so much money out there right now and so little emphasis on the, on the square footage and so many suppliers. If you saw today's news, Kokomo, uh, or Marion, GM just committed $500 million for the building of their facilities. They have to have suppliers come somewhere close by. I think this is an excellent target, uh, particularly as close as you are with the Hoosier Harbor Highway and connecting it where you get up to four points. Are those 400,000 square foot uh, buildings still selling along I-65 and stuff like that? Yeah, there, there aren't any right now. Um, there are they, I mean, they, they can't keep up. Okay. Which means that the 12 months of time we're already late. Yes. Well, yeah, that's, but anybody that's going to build is already there. And the good news is that after we start this every day, close to that 12 months, by the time somebody comes in, they look at a site, they make a commitment, they decide what they want to do, where they're going to go, they would be another two to three years out, and you're already eight months in the process makes you buy. Thank you all very much. Well, one question I have, and I don't know whether Barry or you, Jake, the projects you've dealt with in that have how many have the RD, local RDCs actually been the one? It all depends. Uh, I, not a lot, but it all depends on the finance and structure of the county, right? So White County, for example, there's 22 million sitting in my fund there to use. The RDC doesn't need to be involved. Uh, other counties I have the, the, the have the pretty strong TIF dollars, and the TIFs just keep growing and expanding, so it's only natural that the RDCs are the funnel control for that. So it, it all depends on how the, the counties are situated. Yeah, so the, yeah, investment in something like this, net a project, returns that those funds back to the coffer, the redevelopment coffer, to one day, eventually, when the redevelopment commission is no longer, reverts back to the local unit of government for, you know, after we're all gone. So the goal is year 26 of the, of the sunsetting of TIF, and those, all that reinvestment of cycle uh, in this specific scenario comes back to the local units of governments at some point. Are you suggesting um, going to the bank and borrowing the money or are you suggesting to bond? Uh, I don't think I would want to bond. No, the, the, the bond costs and the things that yeah. associated with that. I think it, I think there are banks though that would support the RBC. Yeah, 
three times by the way since then. Oh, they have? Are you talking about a pair of white RMC or? Yeah. Oh, you start using using a pair of white. We're talking about white. Oh, at the Terra White building? That building, that building was built about the same time frame. It was a little more money than that, but there, keep in mind, it's not comparable because they have floor and infrastructure and office build out the show building to put all that in. So their building was probably six million dollars at that time, but it was all finished. I see. So I don't know that I can correctly answer your question. I would expect it to be about the same as White Chapel floors as well as the show. So you don't get the floor. Nope. And the reason we don't do the floor, that's a, so what we do is we put a real heavy vapor barrier to keep that building from sweating. Exhaust fans and louvers sneak in, but a thermostat is controlled because if you don't do that, they'll turn into a greenhouse. And then they'll deteriorate and sweaty and all that. But we don't want to put the floor in because we don't know what the sewage requirements are. And it doesn't make any sense to put in a floor where they can tear it back up later for grains or process equipment or something like that. And then you end up paying to tear it out and put it back in. And that raises the, the cost for the, for the client coming in. It makes it hard to close the deal. So if the floor stays out, you'll have. Electricity is serviced, light the building, run the fans, run the heat cooling, to keep the heat to keep the moisture down, to keep the lights on, be able to show it. Uh, everything else from the outside will look done, but it won't have a sprinkler system in it yet. We we're waiting to see what the requirements of the people apply on. And flooring is probably top five customizable requests in these projects. It's for four thickness. So the, the, the finished building product will probably be closer to 175 hours. 